Well, Katie and Ryan, it's so nice to meet you guys. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. I have to tell you, I screened A Wonderful Day with Mabel McClay with my three-year-old, and she goes, Mama, this is such a good show for kids. Oh, boy. <laughs> and we didn't even pay her to say that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we did it. She is free PR for you guys. Man, that <laughs> That's good so to, lovely. That is good to hear. Well, I want to hear from you guys how you got involved with this show, your parents, um, and you're also involved in kids programming and theater in general. So share a little bit about the path that led to the creation of this show. Sure. Yes, we owned and operated an improv school for kiddos in Los Angeles for uh, 10 years. And, um, and then we had three kiddos of our own. And so in a lot of ways, we feel so perfectly prepared. Oh, and before all of that, we were actors and sort of dabbling in that and went to school for that as real young people. Um, so yeah, in some ways, it's all of those things coming together in this moment, which has felt really lovely and exciting. Um, and uh, we have a friend, Jeremy Boring, who was starting the Bent Key and starting kids content. And we met him in LA. He's a, such a creative and kind person. And um, he said, do you guys want to work together? You guys know more about kids than anybody I know. And we said, sure. How about um, something inspired by Mr. Rogers? Because that is our favorite show. And so uh, that's what we kind of set out to do. Well, I love that because this show really does feel like a throwback to the shows I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing really anything like that right now. So talk about the hole in children and families entertainment that you are really trying to fill with this show. Well, for us, we uh, it's purposeful in that it's a um, slightly paced down show, and there you know there aren't a bunch of uh, quick cuts and and flashy flash stuff, you know, um, and it's 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 meant to to guide the 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 viewer along uh, with their attention span instead of trying to chase it and grab their attention, grab their attention, and so. Um, uh, and, and our kids, they did not, uh, they have not grown up with uh, uh, television because we, we've always had a, a movie projector, a little lunchbox movie projector. And so our, it's been a lot of classics, uh, things that I grew up with, you know, the DVD uh, sets and things. And so this is, so when we were asked to develop or, or we were uh, given the opportunity and they said, well, what, what would be your dream scenario? And we're like, it would be this, this combo of this and that. And it would be a, a, a vintage a kind of throwback feel that uh, like a, but when you see it, it feels like a, a brand new song that you somehow already know. And, um, uh, and we just couldn't be more thankful that they said, yes, <laughs> do that. And so I think we also did. we felt really inspired um, to to find a solution to this problem we've had as parents where we'll mm -hmm. turn off a show in the limited um, amount of time our kids have seen sort of modern kids content and they truly have um, flushed cheeks, dilated eyes, they're uh, crazy behavior, they don't want to turn it off. They're, they've obviously been so hyper stimulated by the content. Um, and so when we show them older things of the, the way shows kind of used to feel and uh, they don't have that reaction. And so we thought, well, let's make a modern take on that stuff. It's, it's so good. And, and so that's what we've set out to do. Yeah, uh, like little bits of sugar sprinkled in, not a, just a straight sugar rush for, you know, for <laughs> yeah. 30 minutes. Um, so hopefully there's a uh, meat and potatoes in there too and uh, they can take their time going through. What was your kid's reaction? Have they seen this? Yes, yes, they have. Um, they are, they love the show so much. And also their favorite part is Jasper, Mabel's puppet dog. So they sort of have this energy of like, mom, can you please get off the screen so we yeah. can get to that <laughs> great part of the show? Um, and they love, they also love the town of Bannerberry. It's this little stop motion world we created. And it's these little paper and wood pieces. And it's so practical and so sweet and is, is, really become a, a favorite favorite of theirs. It's a special yeah. piece of the show. And our kids particularly like Banderberry because they uh, remember that uh, many of the characters and, and um, stories are uh, familiar with them because they, I was making those stories up, telling them bedtime stories uh, with characters that we made up. <laughs> and then, so now they're, they're watching going, wait a minute, that's a thing? And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you guys, yeah, you guys so that's know a, about that's it. That's a so. fun fact. That whole piece of the show was inspired by Ryan's bedtime <laughs> stories. Um, so they, they love that. But they do but, love, but she's not lying. Jasper, oh my gosh. That Ricky and John are the guys doing the puppets and they are just the best. And Ricky is doing the voice. 
and John made the puppet. And I mean, they're just the most talented, kind, uh, and they're just so full of spark and wonder that uh, I find myself also uh, forgetting Jasper is not a real, uh, well, not not that he's not real, but he's, uh, well, that he's a puppet. Yeah. <laughs> His accent is my favorite. That oh, it just cracked me up when I heard his accent. Yes. We worked hard on that on getting it just right. Ricky, oh, it, the yeah. actor is so is so talented with that stuff. So we were able to tweak it until it, it sounded just like Jasper to us. Oh, it's so cute. So the show is really about, you know, appreciating the wonder of everyday life, encouraging creativity in kids. Talk about why this is so important for children's development. Yes, I think it, it does. It, it celebrates the idea that wondering about things is a beautiful thing. And um, really, it's about a love of learning because young children have this at a really young age really easily. You don't have to teach them to love to learn about things and wonder about things and ask questions. Anybody who works with children or has children knows that. And so um, I think we wanted to preserve that and embrace it, the joy of wondering, and then also um, the idea that life is wonderful. And so mm -hmm. there are themes of optimism as the episodes unfold and and hope. And that isn't it such a joyful thing to wonder? Absolutely. So what age group is this series primarily aimed at? I did screen it with my three-year-old. My five-year-old was kind of in the background watching and he thought it was really cool. He really liked the turtle. So how did you guys ensure that the show would be engaging and appropriate for different age groups? Well, um, it's primarily geared toward preschool or younger elementary, but our hope is that in the same way old schoolhouses could kind of work for all kiddos at the same time, that, that maybe large families with multiple siblings could all enjoy it together. And the main way to accomplish that was to make sure Mabel is a character who speaks in a non-babyish, non-obnoxious way. And so her tone is gentle. She's very calm. She has a big vocabulary and she doesn't stop to explain big words. Um, so we kind of had this spirit of like, little kids, keep up. We trust that you will. And big kids, we have stuff for you too. Um, and, and sort of had that approach with all pieces of the show. Yeah. And it's only a benefit and a, um, you know, it's a blessing when uh, our our five year old even this morning I, I said a word and she goes no what is that you know and so if if that happens with our show uh, that that is just a win like that mm -hmm. at every level that it could um, spur on interaction and wondering and learning. Um, and we also had so much fun with Mabel leaving the house and where she goes on these sort of field trips and so the range of things we were able to do with that. I mean, Mabel learns to throw a football on a giant famous football field with the head coach. She learns to ice skate from gold medalist Scott Hamilton. She learns, uh, she visits a fire station because we know really our preschool audience wants to see those fire trucks. Um, she goes to a chocolate factory and learns to work those machines. So we were able to explore the big wide world through having Mabel leave the house in that segment. And uh, it's, it's such a fun part of the show. How did you get into the headspace of playing Mabel? I mean, what a fun character to play. Yes, uh, it, she's a delight to play. I at first did not want to act in the show. I really thought it was going to be creating and executive producing, and I had such a, a vision for what the show looked like, but I, the vision did not include uh, me on camera. Um, but everyone kind of talked me into it, and um, although I have an acting background when I was younger, it wasn't ever super interesting to me. Um, uh, I didn't find a lot of purpose or fulfillment there, but this role has felt like I really am able to say something that I believe in, which is I have, I have really strong opinions now about how we talk to kids, how we teach them, what we do when they're having trouble regulating their emotions. And, and a lot of that came from just being a mom. So I do feel like at this moment in life that I'm perfectly suited to play Mabel and she's sort of an idealized version of me as a mom or a teacher. So it's not too far of a stretch, but um, it's a real delight. And we have I benefited from from the magic that she naturally has. She would not say this, but that's why everybody was like, no, it should be you being Mabel because you have this natural um, way with kids and mm -hmm. um, uh, she just, you know, she isn't Mabel, but she has a she has those Mabel-like qualities in real mm -hmm. life, and that's why our 
our kids improv school worked is because of her magic and uh same thing with mabel that those those really are qualities that uh that come naturally to to her um and then i naturally make the kids just wild and crazy and then it gives her opportunity to mabel them all up get them all mabeled out I love it. I love it. So guys, what would you tell parents who are maybe hesitant to screen time? They're worried about, you know, putting their kids in front of a show. What would you tell them to encourage them to watch the show that it's safe for their kids? Um, I would encourage them that we are those parents. We are embarrassingly strict with screen time and um, until recently have never owned a television and we, we truly, we truly get that. Um, we homeschool our kids. We're specific about all the content that they take in and and who's teaching them and and who is that person and what do they believe and um and so those we are those people um and recently when ben key launched i couldn't figure out the technology of logging myself in as like an employee and so i ended up i was like i can't fiddle with this anymore get and i took out my credit card and i was like take my 99 dollars and uh so that we could watch the show and show our kids on our tv and i'm not kidding i feel like it's the best 99 dollars i ever spent because ever since we just flick it on mm. they love the shows there are so many shows and we've been you know, we're developing season two right now. So we have work, we have these moments where I need them occupied for a moment. And I don't have to think about what is on the entire app. I don't have to go through and make sure any shows are appropriate for their for for their age or their de developmentally. Um, it's a huge burden lifted on the parent side of things. Um, and so I'm grateful that we're, we can actually be customers. We're the exact demographic. Our kids are seven, five, and almost two. So um, we are those parents. And so we sought out to kind of make something they would appreciate. I love that. How does your faith influence the projects that you, you guys do tackle? Well, our, um, it's interesting because we didn't make, Mabel is not a faith-based show. Um, we wanted it to be open and accessible for every family to gather and celebrate the values and timeless virtues that we all agree on. And, um, and also our faith is a huge part of who we are. And so our hope and our prayer is really that our light can really kind of shine in that way. And we think that it will. And there are some episodes that we see We'll, we'll, we think we'll tee up Christian families to continue the conversation um, just perfectly in, in a way that that feels good and that also um, keeps the show open for all kinds of families. We were really inspired by Mr. Rogers, honestly, in this way. He was an ordained minister. He had very strong convictions and, and he made, made a show that was accessible to all families and um, had a huge impact in that way. Absolutely. So what else are you guys working on? We are working on season two of Mabel. We're so excited. We're about to launch the writers off to write. And um, the process before the writers write is really, um, really fun for us. We, we collect all of these ideas and what we want to talk about and how we tie it through each segment in the show, because it's a very segmented show. There's Jasper and all of his creations, there's Bannerberry, there's our guests and our field trips, and we like it all to tie together nicely so that it fits into the books that appear in the show. So all of that is a lot of heavy lifting on the front end of development. So that's what we're working on right now. Awesome. Well, I'm excited about what you guys are doing. Thank you for being a part of this, you know, positive educational entertainment for kids. It's so needed. It, it really is. Thank you so Thank much you. for having us. We're so glad to be part of it. It was nice to meet you guys. Thanks so much. You. you too.